hi hope you people are doing well once again i am in front of you this time i have brought a method to balance a chemical equation this method is the simplest method and easy method however the difficult the chemical equation is you can easily balance it okay but before going into that method directly i would like to introduce some other methods which usually people use to balance chemical equation here one of the methods is balancing equation by just inspection you can do this method only if you are thorough about the equations if you are thorough about practicing the balance equations if you are not thorough then please don't go to this method then there is another method which is called as algebraic method algebraic method is also not that much familiar method you have to work out practice well for doing this method and coming to the third method which is called as heat and trial method this is somewhat common method people usually uh, use this method then coming to the fourth type which is frequency number method and in today's class i am going to explain you this method how easily we can balance a chemical reaction using frequency number method soon you are going to see okay <clears throat> let us start our uh, frequency number method first before going into that frequency number method i would like to uh, clarify you about what is meant by a frequency number or what is meant by frequency number method okay uh, the frequency number can be defined as as you can see i have highlighted the definition here the frequency number can be defined as the frequency of occurring or uh, occurrence of various elements in an equation is called frequency number so how frequently a atom is being repeated how frequently it is appearing that is called as the frequency number of that atom of an element here you have to remember that the frequency of an atom means how frequently it is being repeated how at how many places it is repeating it does not mean how many atoms for example let us take this uh, reaction as an example i have written here a decomposition reaction of uh, potassium nitrate potassium nitrate on decomposition it gives potassium nitrite and oxygen is formed here if you carefully observe here potassium nitrate in potassium nitrate there are three elements one is potassium second one is nitrogen and third atom is third type of atom is oxygen okay uh, if you observe on right hand side you will find definitely similar atoms we are, we are not going to get new atom which is not present on the reactant side in how many places potassium is existing means here there is only one potassium nitrate therefore there can be only one position or, or there can be only one place where potassium can exist on left hand side that is on reactant side and coming to the on, uh, product side in how many places this potassium is existing means in product side also it is existing one time so totally in how many places potassium is existing means it is existing in two places so carefully note once again that we are not counting the number of atoms on left hand side and right hand side we are counting in how many places this potassium is existing including on left hand side as well as right hand side coming to the uh, second part second atom that is uh, nitrogen in how many places nitrogen is existing here nitrogen is existing uh, at one place on left hand side and second place on right hand side there are no other places where nitrogen exists so i'll put the number 2 here 
and coming to the oxygen part in how many places oxygen is existing oxygen is existing in only how many places it is existing in three places is it isn't it or you have to say see sometimes you may get confused here three oxygen atoms are there here two are there here two are there so totally uh, 3 plus 2 plus 2 what do you do usually here you will write 7 here which is a, a wrong method you don't have to you should not add the number of atoms you have to count the number of places where that atom is existing I hope it is clear so this is the way how you are going to uh, find out the frequency of an atom how frequently that atom is repeating in the above equation if you observe potassium is existing in two places and nitrogen is also existing in two places and even oxygen is existing in sorry oxygen is existing in three places so this is the these are the frequency numbers of different atoms now coming to the rules before going before starting uh, how to balance a chemical equation using frequency number method let us have a look at the rules of the uh, of this method in this method the first very first rule here is uh, write frequency number for all elements in the given equation so what you have to do you have to note down first thing what you have to do is you have to note down all the atoms that are present in the given equation as we did in the above case once again have a look see what I have done here means what all the elements that are present I have noted down potassium nitrogen oxygen etc writing the elements you have to find out the frequency number how frequently it is being repeated as I, I have already explained you how we got this number two two three you have to do the same thing then after that what you have to do is second point balance that atom of element whose frequency number is the lowest so out of this uh, three numbers two two three which is the lowest number here is that is uh, for potassium as well as for nitrogen this is the least number among the uh, obtained frequency numbers then if the two numbers if the two atoms are having same frequency number then what we have to do we have to balance either potassium we have to balance or we have to balance nitrogen so according to the second point uh, second rule we have to balance that atom which is having lowest frequency number but here we are coming across uh, two atoms which are having same frequency number then come to the third rule you will get a idea about that so balance uh, sorry coming the fourth rule because uh, if if the atoms are not having same frequency numbers what do you do so you uh, usually uh, first lowest number the atom which is having lowest frequency number uh, that will be balanced first then in the increasing order of the frequency number you have to balance for example for example in this case if you imagine if you assume nitrogen is having uh, frequency number 4 just assume its value is 4 then what you have to do means in the above equation you have to balance first potassium then you have to balance then uh, oxygen then you have to balance nitrogen in the increasing order you have to go but that is not the case here we will see another example where uh, if time permits then come to the fourth rule if two at uh, two or more elements are having same frequency number then what if two or more elements having same frequency number then what then nothing is there simple thing what you have to do means you, you have to balance the metal first as in the above case you have seen potassium as well as nitrogen are having same frequency number that is two so among nitrogen and potassium which is the metal means potassium is the metal so out of potassium or nitrogen which element we have to balance first means we have to balance potassium then come to nitrogen then afterwards in the last what you have to do we have to balance oxygen as it has the highest frequency number is it clear then in case in case if both are metals or if both are non-metals and both are having same frequency value same frequency number then what you have to do then you have to balance the one with highest atomic number first for example in case ever you come across carbon and hydrogen if you have two non-metals 
and carbon's frequency number is 3 even hydrogen frequency suppose in case even hydrogen's frequency number is 3 then out of these two which one you have to balance first is you have to balance carbon first because carbon's frequency number is 3 but its atomic number is the highest compared to hydrogen or in case if ever you come across potassium and if, uh, and as well as uh, suppose chromium then which one you have to balance first means you have to balance chromium first because chromium atomic mass atomic number is highest compared to the potassium okay then let us uh, check with one example here if you see here in the example i have taken calcium carbonate i have taken calcium carbonate is here calcium carbonate sorry bicarbonate is there calcium bicarbonate when treated with calcium hydroxide it gives rise to calcium carbonate and water so we are treating bicarbonate a bicarbonate with calcium hydroxide we are getting calcium carbonate and water in this equation what is the frequency number of calcium in how many places calcium is repeated so this is the one place where calcium is repeated in one this is the one place and this is the second time calcium is repeating and here is the third time calcium is repeating here okay now if we check here uh, the frequency number for calcium i'll write it as 3 okay now coming to the second atom which is present in the above equation is hydrogen see if you carefully observe i have already written the atoms which are repeated in the above equation okay in how many places hydrogen is repeating this is the one pla first place where hydrogen is repeating and this is the second place where hydrogen is repeating and this is third place so totally uh, in how many places it is repeating means in three places it is repeating so once again i would like to remind you that don't count the number of atoms it will go wrong if you count the number of atoms hydrogen two atoms are here here hydrogen two atoms are here here hydrogen two atoms are here totally if you write six then that will be a wrong method now coming to the carbon atoms how many car how in how many places carbon atoms are repeating this is the first place where carbon is uh, existing and this is the second place where carbon is existing so totally in how many places carbon is repeating means it is repeating in two places and coming to oxygen it is repeating in almost every molecule of the reactant as well as product so this is the first place this is the second place third fourth so what is the frequency number of oxygen means oxygen's frequency number is 4 so out of this values 3 3 2 4 which is the lowest number here means 2 is the lowest number so then which atom we have to balance first here carbon atom we have to balance first okay then if you check how many carbon atoms are here on the left hand side how many carbon atoms are here on the left hand side there is one carbon atom here but with a suffix 2 then totally how many carbon atoms here are there on the left hand side totally two carbon atoms are there on the left hand side and on the right hand side how many carbon atoms are here only one carbon atom is here so that is i have mentioned here so on left hand side there are two carbon atoms on right hand side there is one carbon atom to make this value to what we have to do we have to multiply with the two so that is what i am indicating here multiply with the two then carbon atoms will be balanced so let us check i have already written the equation uh, multiplying with the two this is the place where i have multiplied the carbon atom with the two okay is it clear now uh, then after balancing carbon atoms then we have to move towards which atom calcium is having the frequency value 3 and uh, hydrogen is also having frequency number 3 so out of these two calcium is a metal and hydrogen is non metal we all know that okay uh, so first thing which we have to balance here is calcium we have to balance calcium first here on left hand side how many calciums are here means this is the first place and even in this molecule there is only one calcium even in this there is only one calcium so totally how many calciums are there means two calciums on left hand side i have mentioned here now if you observe already we have multiplied here with the two for balancing carbons and automatically automatically even calciums are also balanced here see how many calciums are there on the left hand side here 
as i already said two calciums are there on the left hand side now if we check the calciums on the right hand side there are two calcium atoms so automatically the whole equation got balanced here if you observe uh, hydrogen but if you observe hydrogen here uh, you have to still balance hydrogen here because on the left hand side totally how many hydrogens are here means here two hydrogens are there because the suffix 2 is here and here two hydrogens are there because suffix 2 is here so totally how many hydrogens are here means there are totally four hydrogens on the left hand side and two hydrogens on the right hand side so simply what you have to do to make it four multiply with the two here your problem solved so this is the way how you have to balance the chemical equation now you may be thinking that oxygens are there we have not written anything we have not mentioned anything about oxygens here see uh, when we have balanced uh, carbon calcium hydrogen almost in uh, every case you'll find the last atom automatically it will get balanced if not you have to check once see if you come if you check oxygens here totally uh, I'll, if I'm, if we multiply oxygens here 3 2 are 6 totally plus 2 totally there are how many oxygens mean totally eight oxygens are on the left hand side if you count the oxygens on the right hand uh, right hand side uh, 2 3 or 6 again six oxygens and plus two oxygens totally two so on uh, uh, on as a whole there are eight oxygen atoms on the left hand side and uh, eight oxygen atoms on the right hand side this is the uh, way how we balance the equation using frequency number method coming to the second example i have taken potassium dichromate when treated with sulfuric acid it gives potassium sulfate chromate uh, chromium sulfate water and oxygen and i have noted down the elements which comes uh, in the above equation uh, potassium chromium uh, oxygen hydrogen and sulfur frequency number of potassium in how many places potassium is repeating if you carefully observe potassium is repeating in only two places this is the first place where it is repeating and this is the second place where it is repeating then coming to chromium chromium is also repeating in two, two places and oxygen is repeating in almost not almost in all places that is one first place second place third fourth and fifth sixth totally frequency number of oxygen is six and hydrogen is repeating in only two places and uh, sulfur is repeating in one two three places sulfur is repeating in three places so now tell me the balancing order which is the first atom we have to balance so we have to find out the atom with the lowest frequency number so what is the lowest frequency number in total uh, frequency numbers that is 2 is the lowest frequency number but if you observe carefully 3 atoms are having value 2 potassium chromium and hydrogen but as i already said if there is a non metal and metal then we have to give priority to the metal and if there are if they if both are metal then we have to give priority to the metal which is having highest atomic number we all know that potassium is uh, its atomic number is 20 and chromium's atomic number is 24 okay so we have to balance the chromium first so balancing order is one and then we will balance potassium after balancing potassium we have to balance hydrogen it is the third number and ox sulfur sorry not oxygen sulfur its position is four in the balancing order and this one oxygen is the last one way which we have to balance okay okay i'll get five and then coming to the equation uh, once chromium let us check the equation once again how many chromiums are there totally on the left hand side if you carefully observe there are only two chromium atoms on the left hand side as well as two chromium atoms on the right hand side okay two chromiums on the left hand side this is the left right hand side which i am highlighting and this is the left hand side chromium totally two chromium so no need to balance this uh, the chromiums in this case okay this is already a balanced one coming to potassium two potassiums are here on the left hand side and two potassiums are there on the right hand side so this is also a balanced one don't touch it coming to hydrogen there are two hydrogens on the left hand side two hydrogens on the right hand side so no need to balance hydrogens as well and comes sulfur the case of sulfur okay how many sulfurs are here on the left hand side you will find only one sulfur on the left hand side this is the place 
or these are the atoms of sulfur only one atom is here and when you see here there are three atoms of sulfur here and one atom uh, one atom of sulfur so totally on the right hand side four sulfur atoms are there and on the left hand side only one sulfur atom is here so i have already mentioned here uh, that is one atom of sulfur on left hand side and four atom of sulfur on right hand side so how we have to balance this one simply how can we make one uh, equal to four simply what you have to do is you have to multiply one with the four so that is what i have done in the next equation while balancing so i have kept coefficient here four before one sulfur atom so when you balance sulfur here by multiplying with four what happens the hydrogen number changes that which were already balanced here we have already mentioned that hydrogens are already balanced but by multiplying with four here what is happening the number of hydrogens here becomes eight whereas the number of hydrogens on the right hand side remains only two how can we overcome this situation simply what you have to do means you have to multiply with 4 here so that you can make uh, the number of hydrogen atoms balanced on both sides now you can see that here on the left hand side there are 8 hydrogens and here on the right hand side there are 8 hydrogen atoms now if you check the number of oxygens on the reactant side and the product side the oxygens on the reactant side are odd in number whereas the oxygens on the product side are even in number in if ever you come across such situation what you have to do is simply multiply the whole equation not just in this case whenever you are um, balancing a equation you come across a situation that you have odd number on reactant side and even number on product side or vice versa uh, you have to do this thing multiply the whole equation by 2 except the elementary uh, molecule which is present here the elementary molecule that is present here is oxygen so I am not multiplying oxygen with 2 so once we multiply with the 2 the whole equation becomes like this you can see here and if you count the number of oxygens on the left hand side now there are 46 oxygens and right hand side now there are how many oxygens there are 40 oxygens so now the scene is very clear so here we have already not multiplied any number here as i said earlier so to make it 46 what we have to do we have to multiply with the 3 here when you multiply with the 3 here what happens to the number of oxygens so oxygen number increases by 6 so now the total number of oxygens on the left hand side and right hand side will be equal to 46 hope you understand the frequency number method if not watch this video once again uh, definitely you'll get it uh, thanks for watching